Go bird watching. Simon says go bird watching. Eyes. Okay. What are you pointing to? Anybody say it. Uh, Occipital. Occipital lobe. That's how you pronounce it. Yep. Responsible for vision and interpreting what you see. Uh, Simon says. Simon says use a balance beam. Oh, no, that was the thing that was below it. Is it on your brain hat? No. Where is it? It's like towards right the, the back. back. Yeah. It's towards the back. Yeah. It's not the brain stem. It's the cerebellum. Cerebellum. So I'm going to draw a picture up here so that you can point to the cerebellum or the brain stem if you feel like you need to. So here's your brain, like this. But then you've got the cerebellum is on this oh, underside, yeah. right? Cerebellum. And then you've got your brain stem. And, what's and then spinal cord. The large part? Uh, This is called the cerebrum. Okay. That's what the whole thing is called. Oh. Okay, Simon says. Simon says. Um, Simon says, listen to some music. Simon says, listen. Specifically, listen to music, not create music. Simon says, listen to music. Okay, where are you pointing to? Uh, temporal. Temporal lobe, okay? It's where all the hearing and uh, senses for hearing comes from. Okay? Um, Simon says... Oh, okay. So, Simon says... This is actually... So you got your temporal lobe here, right? No, uh, what did we talk about that was located in here? Uh, that had to do with memory. Hypothalamus. 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 Hypothalamus is actually a part, it's this part of your temporal lobe. Okay? It's sort of in the middle there. Okay? So, temporal lobe is also your memory. Okay? So, Simon says you see a ghost. Oh. Um, Simon says you see a ghost. You might point to two parts. You're seeing a ghost. What would happen if you saw a ghost? So, what are you pointing to? Occipital. Occipital, because you're seeing, but you see a ghost. How are you going to react when you see a ghost? Oh, yeah. You're going to be afraid. Where's the fear center? Anybody remember what it's called? The amygdala. The amygdala. Where's the amygdala located? In the hypothalamus. In the hypothalamus, cerebral. which is where? In the cerebellum. So it's right above, or is it not in, it's right above the cerebellum. It's actually in this part, this bottom part of the temporal lobe. Okay. Uh, Simon says, you fondly remember your first day of school. Uh, Simon says, you fondly remember your first day of school. Where are you pointing? Uh, Hypothalamus, which is in your temporal lobe. Okay, at the bottom of your temporal lobe. Uh, Simon says, hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, Simon says, you make a brain hat. You cut out all the pieces and you take together a brain hat. Simon says. There are two parts. One's on your brain hat, one's not. Okay, what's the one on your brain hat that you're pointing to? Frontal lobe. Frontal lobe. And the, and the motor cortex is specifically in the frontal lobe. What part is not on your brain hat that you need to point to? To, to cut a part of your brain hat and to tape it all together. No? Cerebrum? Cere cerebellum? Cerebellum. It's responsible for, for balance and fine motor movements. You know what that means? Fine motor movements. So like real things you gotta do with your fingers. Remember we said here, this, you know, just moving your arms is frontal uh, lobe. But if you want to be able to have the coordination to touch your nose, you need to be able to use your cerebellum. Uh, Simon says breathe. Is it on your hat? No. What's responsible for involuntary things? Oh, brain breathing. Stem. Brain stem. We had the example of the little girl who was born without a brain. All she had is a brain stem. Why was she able to survive for three years? Because all her basic bodily functions, all the involuntary things, her heart beating, her blood pulsing through her veins, her breathing, was all able to happen. Yeah? Is there another part that controls breathing? Because then how can we do it voluntarily? Like holding our breath or breathing in people? Oh, yeah, frontal lobe. 
but also that's also a voluntary motion that we could do if we wanted. Um, but you do it. You're all doing it right now. Surprise. You're all breathing, right? I um, mean, you don't have to think about it. Which actually does cause you to stop breathing if you don't try to breathe. Wait, what is it? An infrasonic sound. If you while under, oh, like ultrasonic sound? Really yeah. high sounds? No, really low pitch sound. Really low pitch sound. You, and basically, it forces you to breathe against your will. Really. So, interesting. Very interesting. You notice you're not breathing. And you know what? That must have something to do with if it's hearing. Do you hear it's, a really high pitch or a really you low pitch? You can't hear it. It's too low. But it doesn't affect deaf people, does it? It probably does. It goes right through your entire body. I see. I see. Okay. We do two more. Ready? Simon says. Oh, I don't know. We didn't talk about this. We'll see if you can see it on your on your um, brain. Simon says. Smell something good cooking downstairs. Simon says, smell something good cooking downstairs. Where are you pointing? Temporal lobe. Temporal lobe. Uh, it's specifically the part of the temporal lobe that's close to the frontal lobe, because they kind of work together. Uh, Simon says, Simon says, read a book. A couple things you can point to here. A couple things that will have to work together. So what's one that you're pointing to? Occipital. Occipital, you need to be able to see. Hey, what's one other thing that you're pointing to? Oh, uh, the uh, parietal, the length. Yeah, the parietal lobe um, also has some stuff to do with. So what is your seeing. dyslexia? If you have dyslexia? Yeah. And it's funky. I don't know for sure if dyslexia is a brain thing or, I mean, or if it's a, a chromosomal thing, or if it's a mutation. But if it was a brain thing, it definitely has to do with your, it most likely has to do with your a combination of your occipital and your parietal lobe. Not only reading, but being able to interpret it. Oh, here's one. Uh, Simon says, say a sentence. Good morning. Simon says, say a sentence. Mm -hmm. So what part is responsible for forming oh. sentences? Oh, um. Oh, it's a specific area. part of the frontal lobe. Broca's area. area. Yeah. And what uh, Simon says, listen to what I'm saying and understand what I'm saying. They're in the keys area. Yes, we're in the keys area, yeah. right? Which is right over here. Okay. Think that's good. Simon says, one more. We'll do one more. Simon says, boom! Where is it? That's not like, that's not like, well, not in the hat. It's not in your hat. If you're scared, it's actually, it's the bottom of your temporal lobe, right? The amygdala. Mm -hmm. Okay, you guys can sit down. You're good. It's the brain. I can see your brain.